If you like your wrestling clean, classy, and clever, then it's time to get you started on the golden age of British wrestling. We're talking world of sport, next. I'm Mike Quackenbush and this is Till We Make It. If you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling, and you're never done learning all about it, then join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe down below and enable the notifications while you're at it. Today, in this installment of the Starting Point series, I want to provide you with an entryway into the golden era of British wrestling, commonly referred to as World of Sport. But you need to know, World of Sport is not the name of a wrestling promotion. Rather, it was the name of a sporting program on the ITV channel that ran for decades. And for a period of time, let's say roughly 1965 to 1985, it delivered a golden era of British wrestling right into homes on a weekly basis. Today, I want to open up that treasure chest and pluck out a real gem from the world of sport glory years. During the golden age of British wrestling, the matches that you might see on the World of Sport television program, broadcast by ITV, come almost exclusively from joint promotions, a cartel-like venture which squeezed out competitors whenever it could and made it nearly impossible for wrestlers to negotiate for better pay or terms. The formation of joint promotions coincides pretty neatly with the lifting of a 10-year ban on professional wrestling in the UK. Joint promotions has to adhere to this new system of rules and guidelines concocted by Admiral Lord Mount Evans, a Royal Naval officer and an actual first baron, because that's a thing in England. But instituting these new rules and guidelines is the only reason that the ban has been lifted. For greater context on the development of UK wrestling during this time, check out my book, Pro Wrestling History, Six Threads and Sixteen Decades. It's an audiobook, and you know what? I should get better at putting this in the middle of the videos instead of at the end. During that 20-year golden period, roughly 1965 to 1985, wrestling in the UK is dominated by joint promotions. At their height, they controlled more than 50 distinct championships in the United Kingdom, and they staged roughly 40 live cards every single week. There was no shortage of talented wrestlers and no shortage of championship titles for them to chase, but the real prize back in that day was being featured on TV. And the wrestlers that were featured recurringly on World of Sport grew to enjoy genuine celebrity status in England. Your starting point into British wrestling from the World of Sport era is May 5, 1973. We're headed to the Walthamstow Assembly Hall for an ITV television taping where we're going to see two of the greatest lightweights that ever laced up boots go hold for hold. They're going to wrestle across 10 rounds of five minutes each. And a wrestler needs two pinfalls, two submissions, or in the event that it should occur, a knockout to win the match. Calling the action for us is an all-time great. It's Kent Walton, who sure sounds like he knows a lot about professional wrestling. But the truth is, when Kent Walton gets recruited to start commentating wrestling for ITV, his only prior play-by-play -play experience is in tennis and in soccer. So a lot of the times, he's just making things up as he goes along. And other times, he has an aide sat beside him feeding him the names of wrestling moves so that he sounds proficient to the home viewer. But regardless, the end result is always something wonderful. If you've only ever been exposed to American sports entertainment, then you're going to be delighted to find that World of Sport British wrestling is practically from the opposite end of the pro wrestling spectrum. And when you feel bloated from consuming all the corporate product cranked out of the sports entertainment sausage factory, cleanse your palate with this. Okay, here's what you need to know before we watch. Challenging for the British lightweight title in this bout is none other than Johnny Saint. He's wearing the black trunks and black boots, and in this match, he's got long hair. 
If you only know Johnny Saint from his gig as the general manager on NXT UK, then prepare to have your mind blown. Johnny Saint is already being referred to as the man of a thousand holds at this point in his career, but the truth is he's best known for his escapes. He's an amazing escapologist. And a whole lot of wrestlers out there, including this guy, think Johnny Saint is the single greatest counter wrestler who has ever lived. And the reigning lightweight champion coming into this match is crybaby Jim Briggs. He's the one in blue trunks and he's noticeably shorter than Johnny Saint. He is expert at riling up this ultra conservative British crowd that's on hand in Walthamstow for the title bout. Johnny Saint knows about a thousand different ways to put his opponents away. But Brakes is laser focused on applying his Brakes special, a joint manipulation of the left arm that's still used today by the likes of Zack Sabre Jr. You're going to notice that the wrestling between these two, right out of the opening bell, right there in round one, is absolutely immaculate. And the speed with which they apply their holds is stunning. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, this is a fine time to join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe to my channel right now. Or if you want to take your support of what I do here at Till We Make It to the next level, join us over on Patreon. Every single week I publish a video exclusively for my patrons there. They have access to our private Discord and they get tons of bonus material that you're never going to see here on the YouTube channel. We'd love to have you join our community, so follow the link down below in the descriptus. I feel the run in coming, garage door. I heard you coming a mile away. Okay, so you already know that this title bout will be wrestled across 10 rounds of five minutes apiece, and the rounds will be broken up by 45 second breaks or intervals. But there's one significant stylistic difference that you're probably going to notice right out of the gate in this match, because this style, known as modern freestyle, has no elbow drops, no leg drops, no knee drops of any kind, because in this style of wrestling, a standing opponent attacking a grounded opponent is not permitted. Unlike its American counterpart from this same era, the so-called slam bang western style, in modern freestyle, a standing wrestler can only jump on his grounded opponent in an effort to pin him, not to strike him. And so what you're going to notice is multiple times throughout the match, the standing opponent must wait for the grounded wrestler to get back up so the grappling can resume. And they have to get up to at least one foot for that to be the case. So multiple times, a lot of focus and tension is on the wrestler attempting to get back up onto their feet. Another quirk that you'll probably pick up on in modern freestyle is this. The referee rarely gets down on the mat to administer a count. Generally speaking, the referee always remains standing throughout the match. I think there's an undeniable charm to British wrestling from the world of sport era. It's in the classy commentary by Kent Walton. It's in the vociferous reactions of the audience to every subtle little thing that's happening in the ring. And it's the flawless techniques of the men doing the dance between the ropes. And if you have never been so lucky as to see this style of professional wrestling before right now, leave me a like before you go and then click right over here. And let's dive into Breaks versus Saint for the British Lightweight Championship.